Is this normal for contract transitions? Hey, I am Chuck the Bureaucrat, and a couple of contract employees have shared their story about a transition into a new company that is both strange and kind of unsettling. I'm going to try to generalize this, not so much to protect the innocent, so much as to focus on the behavior less than the players. All right, so these stories usually start out with an incumbent company that has, eh, like less than a year left on their contract. They're coming up on recompete, and they've got some vacancies that they'd like to fill. Right up front, this should be a learning point. Joining a contract company with only a few months left on its contract, no matter what happens, is going to be a somewhat turbulent experience. On balance, that might not really be a bad thing for a recently retired service member turned contractor. It gives you a quick job, a way to get some new and different experiences, and an easy way to transition to something new and better when the time comes. So be aware of how much time is left on the clock, and bear in mind that those vacancies probably exist for a reason. Okay, so the next commonality between these stories that I've been hearing is that the, the newly hired retired service member asks his management what the odds are that the existing company is going to win the contract bid. Invariably, the contract leadership says something like, I think our odds are pretty good, but to be realistic, what are they going to say? Oh, 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 Timmy, I think we really screwed up here. You better get your resume ready. Nah. But they're not really lying to you when they say that. They genuinely do want to win the recompete, and they're doing everything within their power to do that, including putting you on the contract. But things really start to get weird when the incumbent company loses the contract bid and the new company starts to move in. There is a very specific reason that I put air quotes around the word company. That's because there's this very common pattern that people have been describing where the company that takes over the contract is actually a conglomeration of other companies, like a, a joint venture or some kind of subcontracting arrangement. The first issue that employees run into is, who the heck is in charge of this transition? You get this weird situation where Company A and Company B and Company C all seem to be involved in one way or another. Company A is some teeny tiny little business that nobody has ever heard of before. Company B is some kind of mid-sized company, and then Company C is one of those behemoths with their names on a skyscraper down in Pentagon City. You might expect that Company C, the big boys, that they're the ones in charge, but they're not. They kind of lurk in the background. That tiny company A, <laughs> they're the ones who won the contract. But they're like a husband and wife working out of their kitchen. They don't actually have much business infrastructure. So as part of the transition, they're like rapidly scrambling to outsource their payroll and HR services. Meanwhile, something unexpected starts to happen to the workforce. It seems as if these three companies, A, B, and C, sat down and they divided up the positions that constitute the contract. Not the incumbent employees, the positions that they fill. Further, it's as if the manpower budget was divided up between these different companies based off of which positions they're responsible for. And then the individual companies begin negotiating with the employees who are in the positions that they're responsible for. This comes across as very strange to the employees. Bob and Darlene, who sit side by side working together on the same project, can get contacted by different companies and their negotiation process can be completely different and even their offers can seem inconsistent. And then there's a moment which becomes even weirder because Bob, he might be dealing with company A, but he doesn't reach an agreement with them. But then all of a sudden, company C contacts Bob and they are able to reach an agreement. This whole thing is just very weird to me. It's just 
not something that I saw when I was on the uniform side. I mean, I saw rocky transitions, but never something like this. And I'm sure that there's lots of transitions where things go very smoothly, but I'm curious, what have your experiences been? What do newly retired service members really need to be aware of? Put your comments in the comments section so that we can all be prepared, and in the meantime, watch this video.